Okay guys, as promised, here are the jukeboxes from this load. And I'm hoping that this sun is not bothering us too much here. Oops. Let me start over. Here are the start of the jukeboxes. This is about oh, 15 or 20. There's still 13 more in the warehouse we have not picked up yet. First one is a Wurlitzer 2800. That is a 50 record. And if you'll notice, most of these have, if not all of them, have the golden bar feature, which is a plus. Small chip in the clear glass there, but not a problem because it's not a dome. Um, this glass is in nice shape. The grill appears to be in really nice shape. All this stuff is dusty. Some was covered, some was not covered as well. Here is a Wurlitzer 3000. Another 50 record machine, really, really nice shape. Here are the last license was 1974. Oh, it expires in 76. So anyways, you can see how long these have been stored. This is one of the nicer Wurlitzers. Haven't looked inside any of them yet, due to the fact we don't have the cabinet keys here with us at the storage. Here's a Rockola 449. Um, this is the only one of these I've ever owned. I have had literally thousands of jukeboxes in 40 years. That's the only 449. It's a little two record, or pardon me, 50 record machine. Um, this is a 448. Nice shape. Sorry that the glass is not cleaned off yet. We'll have better pictures. But uh, no damage to any glass. No peeling. And next to this should be a 454. There's about three or four or five of these. And uh, once again, I'll have better pictures once we get them cleaned up a little bit. Next to it is a Rockola, if I'm not mistaken, 442. This was a unique one. And once again, no no damage to any glass. The front grill looks nice. All the plastic inserts are there. Once again, very dirty, but very solid. Some of these have a little cabinet scrapes. Some of them have corners knocked off. Like this one here, as you can see, for Mike is damaged. It's normally caused by people moving them, not us. But uh, anyways, this one here is a Rockola 484. Maybe you can see that. Dusty. It's got the little strip on the grill. It says Rockola 484. That strip is damaged. It's just, it can probably be saved. We taped it for the trip, but uh, no broken plastics apparently. However, I see some duct tape over probably where the validator was. So we don't know what's under that. May not have a validator. However, we have not picked the parts up yet. There are a lot of parts. Now here are some boxes that have some broken glass. Might be missing some parts. Um, this one I just noticed. It says Quadraphonic on it. I think these are, four, yeah, these are 454s here. So uh, I believe that's got a damaged front glass. Here is another, what looks like the same, it's got to be a 454. All the keys, it's missing the coin return button, you know, minor stuff. Here is another very dusty 454 in the front of it. Um, don't really, oh, this has a broken flat glass in the front, as you see where the duct tape is. It's got a crack. Now, this little guy here, unfortunately, and we have not opened it, uh, does not have the keys. However, I find a lot of times, not always, that they may be inside, or I cannot believe that we wouldn't have those in the parts section. So, obviously, something was wrong with the keypad, but a very nice small machine especially for the house or your den 
Um, not sure of the number, however, it, maybe somebody can tell me. Uh, it does say Rockola Max. Um, there's several of these Rockola console or coffin models. Um, we haven't picked them all up yet. Stereophonic Rockola. A lot of times we use those for parts as the in internal parts are the same. And on top of it is a mechanism out of a Seaberg, but it is protected with some kind of carpeting so it didn't damage it. Um, here is a 2800. I don't want to call any of them parts machines, but this one is missing some parts as you can see. Next to it is a 3000 Americana. Nice shape, really nice shape. Well, I take that back, it's 3100. And these were great sounding machines from the days. This is a 100 record machine. Now this one does not have the golden bar like many of the other ones do. It's got good glass in the front, no damage. Um, the grill seems to be in really nice shape. And uh, looks like a nice piece. be a great project. Especially for a beginner because it's so solid. Now this, uh, the next Americana, this is a 30 300 it's labeled Americana 3 now this one came out of a location due to the fact that they broke the front glass as you can see um, glass is broken everything else is nice the grill all the chrome I mean it, this is a nice solid machine so this came out because they broke the glass it does have the Wonder Bar feature even the back uh, view there of the city skyline is in nice shape and these were all stored for literally 30 40 years not 40 years on this one of course not that old but uh, they were in a dry climate they were in the desert covered now this is the superstar this is probably the newest Wurlitzer this is a 3600 nice nice shape all the glass is there all the glass is good um, no visible damage. Once again, we haven't opened any of these yet, and we will. Next to it is another 3000, a very solid machine, as you can see. And this has this one button is pushed in. Everything seems to be there, so obviously maybe something came unscrewed. All the buttons are in nice shape. No broken buttons on this one, those are common, but they're easy to replace, and uh, everything seems to be in good shape. Now, we'll get to more in a minute here. I am not an expert by any stretch on uh, booth boxes, consulettes, whatever you want to call them, so I'm hoping for a little help here, guys. Now, this is an interesting one, as it has the golden bar. I didn't know they even made golden bars on... Uh, Consolettes, but it's for a Wurlitzer model. I don't know. Um, here is a Seaberg. That is a 70s style with the black box, gray box. There's only one of those. And then these two here, I am not sure of the model numbers. Obviously, for a 100 record machine, a Wurlitzer, of course. And uh, but these are different. Although the buttons appear to be the same, the top point entry areas are much different. So if somebody could tell me what models, what model they fit, obviously the one on the glass on the on the left has no glass. Here is just the beginning of the Atlas bolt. This is the United's uh, 1958. We were only able to pick up the head. Uh, the cash box is here, and the original legs are here. However, we couldn't fit the uh, alley in the truck, which we will get next. Now, video games, real quick. This is a kit game, and it is in either a joust cabinet or a Robotron. I couldn't find any markings inside. It does have, uh, I imagine, a JAMA board, but it doesn't have any markings as to what it was. 
as far as uh, if it was a Joust or Robotron. I'm leaning towards Joust. Could have been a Stargate, actually, come to think of it. Let me open the inside. This would be a great cabinet if somebody had a project and they were trying to put something back together. As you can see, it's not been all cannibalized. They use the original power board from the Williams game, and up top there, of course, is the aftermarket uh, game. Original power supply in the bottom. Um, door seems to be in good shape. 